English class. English class. How do we make it remarkable? How do we create an incredible English class? I'm asking myself that question every day now because we are starting a San Francisco effortless language club, an English conversation club. But not only English, we'll also teach Japanese. Hopefully, we'll soon add Spanish and maybe other languages too. But I don't want a normal English class. Most English classes are boring and ineffective. Ours will be effective, I already know that, because I'll be using the same effortless English method I use in my MP3 English lessons. But I think that a great teaching method is only part of being remarkable. A truly great class needs more. To be great, an English class needs to support students' emotions. It needs to inspire them, motivate them, energize them, and entertain them. A great English class must also be a true community, a place of friendship, where meaningful connections are made between learners and between teachers and learners. A great English class must be a beautiful place. The room must be decorated beautifully in a way that instantly and automatically makes learners feel both relaxed and alert. Of course, all of this will evolve. We're starting small, with a tiny office space and a couple of students. But our goal is big, and it's absolutely not modest. Our goal is to have the greatest English class in the world. Yes, a great side benefit of the San Francisco Effortless English class is that we'll have more MP3 English lessons. I will record myself teaching every class. And every few months, we'll sell the new collection of lessons. English Club Learn English online. Join a fun international club of English learners. Learn to write English by reading and communicating naturally. Join our Effortless English Club. Effortless English is more than great lessons. We are also a club, a community, a family of English learners. Let's be honest, language learning is a long process, and sometimes it feels lonely. You need friends, coaches, and helpers to encourage you. That's why an English club is so important. An English club is your support system. When you feel tired, they energize you. When you feel discouraged, they encourage you. When you have questions, they give you answers. When choosing an English club, however, it is very important to find very, very positive members. Unfortunately, some clubs and forums are filled with very negative people. For example, my wife Tomoe, who is Japanese, recently posted her introduction on an English community forum. The next day, some guy responded to her by correcting all her mistakes. He was cold, unfriendly, and condescending. You don't want that kind of club. What you want are extremely positive, enthusiastic, friendly people. You want an English learning family that will always encourage you. Our Effortless English Club is exactly that. We are very blessed with many wonderful people. Our members are absolutely fantastic. They are intelligent, extremely warm and friendly, and very positive. At the Effortless English Club, we simply do not tolerate negativity. We don't tolerate insults or personal attacks or criticism of other members. Our members will always make you feel welcome. So please, whether you join our club or another, be sure to find an English learning family that is positive, friendly, and warm, and enjoy your English learning.
English learning psychology. Psychology is 80% of success. Method is only 20%. Tony Robbins, peak performance coach. Most English learners are very intelligent. Most are highly motivated when they begin. Most students are very successful in school, in their jobs, in their businesses, and in their relationships. So why do so many fail to speak English easily and quickly? What is the problem? Why do people who are normally so successful fail in this one area? There are two answers to that question. One, bad methods. Number two, bad psychology. Learn English, methods and psychology. I talk a lot about methods. As you know, the grammar and textbook methods used in schools are terrible. They are total failures. Very few people will learn to speak English easily if they use those methods. That's why I developed the Effortless English System. It is a system designed to help you speak and understand real English. But even if you use my system, it's not enough. Tony Robbins is right. A great method is still only 20% of success. The other 80% is psychology. Psychology means motivation, energy, beliefs, rules, standards, and emotions. When learning English, psychology is very important. To succeed as an excellent English speaker, you must learn to manage your emotions. You must develop a psychology of success. One key way to do this is to manage your emotional states. In fact, this is probably the most important element of success psychology. Poor emotional states will lead to failure. Powerful emotional states lead automatically to success. For example, if you are frequently tired, bored, depressed, you will struggle to study English consistently. You will have poor concentration. Your memory will be worse. You will be more likely to quit or to study in a distracted or lazy way. You must learn to master your emotions. You must be energetic, excited, enthusiastic, and passionate every time you study English. Imagine smiling and laughing every time you listen to English. Imagine feeling energetic and extremely happy every time you listen to English. Would that make you study more? Would that make you learn faster? Would your concentration be better? Would you improve faster? Yes. Yes to all. So how do you do it? How do you get into a peak emotional state every time you listen to English? Here's my recommendation. Number one, find some exciting, energetic music that you love. Number two, before you start listening to your English lesson, play the music. Number three, as this exciting music plays, raise your head, look up, change your body, pull your shoulders back, stand tall, then smile. Smile a big smile. Take deep breaths. Number four, next, move your body. Dance with the music. Keep looking up. Keep smiling. Jump and dance. Lift your arms over your head as you jump and dance and smile. Feel the happiness and energy from the music. Number five. Stop and say loudly, yes. Say it again, yes. One more time, yes. Number six. Now, play your English lesson. As you listen, keep your shoulders back. Keep your eyes up. Keep smiling. In fact, stand up and keep moving. Walk and breathe deeply as you listen to the lesson. Number seven, 
When you listen to the mini story lessons, answer each question loudly. Don't be shy. Shout your answers. Keep your head and eyes up. Keep a big smile on your face as you answer with a loud voice. Number eight. If you begin to feel tired or bored at any time, pause the lesson. Play your favorite music again and repeat all of these steps. Add more energy to your body and your emotions. Then play the lesson again. By managing your emotions in this way, you will study longer, you will remember more, and you will learn two to four times faster. You'll also teach yourself to be strong and confident when you speak English. Always be in a peak emotional state when you listen to my lessons, and you will always learn much faster. English MP3. English MP3 lessons are the most convenient and efficient way to learn English. Think about the old days when you had to carry CDs or tapes. Now you can have a huge library of English lessons on your small iPod. You can easily carry it with you on the train, while walking around town, on the bus, while exercising. MP3 lessons make it very easy to learn with net time. Net means no extra time, and it refers to the time you must spend doing other things anyway. For example, if you must wait in line at the bank, why not listen to my MP3 lessons at the same time? When you must ride a train or bus to work, use that time productively. Turn on your iPod and learn English. When you go to the gym, or go for a walk or run, you can also attend the Effortless English course. In this way, you double your productivity. You get your body strong, and you feed your mind with excellent English input. English MP3 lessons and net time. Try to make net time a game. Think about your day. What are the time-consuming tasks you must do? Which of these tasks also allow for MP3 English learning? Washing the dishes, doing laundry, sitting in traffic. Many students complain that they have no time for English learning, but that's not true. You do have time, but you must learn to be creative. It's true that going to a traditional school. Can be very time-consuming, but now the school can come to you. Get some high-quality MP3 English lessons. Put them on your iPod. Use your net time wisely, and speak English easily and fast. Don't make excuses. Manage your net time and speak fluent English. Exciting things. At the moment, I'm on vacation in Honduras. I'm on Roatan Island, scuba diving for the next week. So far, the diving has been fantastic. I've gotten my、uh, advanced certification, and also certification in enriched air diving, nitrox.、Uh, when I return to San Francisco, we'll be working on several new exciting things. At the moment. Our two new teachers, Kristen and Chris, are working on new lesson albums. Kristen and I are finishing the movie lessons. As you know, my Effortless English Club lessons include two sample movie lessons. In these lessons, you have the text from a real Hollywood movie. For each scene, there's also a vocabulary lesson. I explain difficult phrases, especially idioms and slang. Then there is a listen and answer mini story lesson, or more than one. This is the most powerful lesson. 
In the mini-story, we ask a lot of questions while telling a story. You answer the questions. As you hear the questions and answer them, you effortlessly learn vocabulary and grammar, and you learn them deeply. Some lesson sets also include a point of view lesson in which we tell the same story using different grammar, past, future, etc. Chris and I are working on a core fluency lesson album. These lessons focus on the most common English words, phrases, and grammar. When you finish these lessons, you will master the most common English, allowing you to speak easily to native speakers. The core fluency lessons will be great for learners who want to strengthen their fluency or for learners who are lower level. The movie lessons will be a great addition to my Effortless English Club lessons. You will continue to improve while learning more idioms and common American slang. So continue to check this blog for more news about the new lessons. Meanwhile, the best way to get started is with my Effortless English lessons. Enjoy English! Festival season in San Francisco. It's my favorite time of year in San Francisco. Festival season. Summer is the time when San Franciscans love to party. The season kicked off with Beta Breakers last month. Beta Breakers started as a normal running race. It was started after the 1906 earthquake as a way to cheer up the city. Well, it has certainly evolved into a cheerful event. Beta Breakers still has a running race. Professional runners, followed by amateur runners, start the race. However, most of the 65,000 people who participated this year were not runners. Rather, Beta Breakers is now one huge moving party. People wear crazy costumes. They build and push huge rolling floats, bars, and other structures. Some people walk or run naked. Many people push or pull full kegs of beer or coolers full of bottles. The party starts at the bay on the east side of the city and winds through the Hayes Street neighborhood, then through Golden Gate Park to the ocean. Along the way, houses next to the route play loud music and host house parties. Only in San Francisco will 65,000 people walk seven miles and party at the same time. Another huge festival is the annual Gay Pride Festival. Of course, it's probably the biggest in the world, as San Francisco has long been a center for gay rights. There is a huge gay pride parade with tens of thousands of people. The San Francisco mayor, city council members, police, and fire department all join the parade. While gay rights may be controversial in other parts of America, in San Francisco, there is no controversy. Out of this year promises to be especially big because California just approved gay marriages and the government of San Francisco strongly supports gay marriage. So, we expect a lot of tourists this year coming to get married. Of course, there will be a lot of crazy costumes and parties, which is a San Francisco tradition. A more relaxed festival is the Hate Street Festival. Hate Street, during the 1960s, was the center for hippies, radicals, and anti-war activities. It's a lot more mainstream now, but still a fun place. The Hate Street Festival has live musicians, good food, and plenty of art on the street. It's a fun time to stroll around the hate area. Another summer tradition in San Francisco is the Stern Grove Music Festival. The best part about Stern Grove is that it's free. Every weekend, different musicians perform at Stern Grove Park. People bring blankets and food and have picnics while they listen to the music. This continues all summer. There are salsa bands, rock bands, classic orchestras, bluegrass bands, etc. Something for everyone. And these are just the big festivals. It seems that every weekend there is a street festival or music festival somewhere in the city. 
it's certainly hard to be bored in San Francisco. Fun in Osaka. The Osaka demonstration was great fun. I particularly enjoyed meeting some of our effortless English members in Japan. My only regret is that I didn't have time to talk to everyone longer. Next time, we'll schedule more time to just sit and chat. Since the Osaka demonstration went well, we'll be doing more workshops and seminars in the future. My plan is to develop two kinds of seminars, one for English teachers and one for English learners. There's a huge need for teacher training, as most English teachers either have no training at all or they are trained in grammar analysis practice methods. In other words, they are only trained to use textbooks. Likewise, I believe there is a need for student training. Most students don't know boring about the research. They don't know there are other ways to learn English. They only know what they have experienced in school, usually boring, grammar-based textbook teaching. My goal for student seminars is to teach students a new way to learn, independently. The Osaka seminar was my first one. It went well, but I felt it was a bit rough and needs improvement. When I get back to San Francisco, I will start doing regular seminars in the city. In this way, I can practice and improve both versions of the seminar. Once I'm satisfied with the quality, we will go on tour and do seminars in different cities around the world. for us. As many members know, we have had a lot of problems with PayPal, the company that processes our credit card orders. This has been very frustrating for us and very frustrating for many of our members. We apologize for the problems some of you have had with PayPal. We do have some good news. Yesterday, we switched to a different system. We are now trying Google Checkout. In general, Google is a much better company with much better customer service. We have talked to them about our needs and concerns, and we are hopeful that Google's Checkout system will be a big improvement. We plan to test Google Checkout for two weeks, then decide whether to switch permanently. Goosebumps. I often write about the benefits of easy, fun reading. In fact, reading easy novels is the best way to improve your vocabulary. If you can listen to audiobooks of the same novels, you'll improve your speaking too. The very best approach is to choose a series of novels. By doing this, you get both the benefits of easy reading and the benefits of narrow reading. The same is true for audiobooks and listening. Members often email and ask me, can you suggest a series of easy novels? So, here are a few that I recommend. Goosebumps by R. L. Stein. These are scary novels for children. They are about monsters and mysteries and other fun stuff. The reading level is at an intermediate level, about a third or fourth grade level. The Goosebumps series is a perfect one to start with. In fact, I just started reading my first Goosebumps novel in Spanish. And I have ordered many more from Amazon.com. The Hardy Boys. 
The Hardy Boys is a very old series. I read the books when I was a kid. Uh, the novels are about two boys who are private detectives. All of the stories are mysteries. Nancy Drew. Nancy Drew novels are very similar to the Hardy Boys novels, but are targeted to a female audience. Sweet Valley Kids, Sweet Valley High. This is a very big series of romance books. The Sweet Valley Kids books are the easiest and are written for children. The Sweet Valley High books are for high school level readers, but are not too difficult. I recommend starting with the kids books and reading a lot of them. Of course, read them only if you like romance novels. All of these series can be found on Amazon.com. I highly recommend reading a lot of them. Fun, easy reading is a great supplement to my lessons. Even if you are an advanced English learner, start the habit of reading easy novels. Then, gradually, read novels that are a little more difficult. Choose series whenever possible, because narrow and concentrated reading produces faster improvement. This kind of reading, combined with my lessons, will produce amazingly fast improvement in your English. Try it for six months. You'll be amazed. Idioms. Idioms are phrases that have a different meaning than the individual words in them. Often, it is difficult to guess the meaning of an idiom, though sometimes you can. Idioms, however, are very important. Normal American speech is full of idioms. Most Americans don't realize that you didn't learn idioms in school. They will use idioms constantly when they talk to you. This frustrates many students. Even students with high TOEFL scores and big vocabularies have trouble with normal conversation because they don't understand the idioms. You must learn idioms. Unfortunately, schools and textbooks don't teach them. I don't know why they don't. It's just another example of how textbook English is not real English. Also, you won't learn many idioms from reading. We use them much more in speech than in writing. How can you learn idioms? Number one, get a dictionary of American idioms. Number two, review the 80 most frequent idioms. Number three, use American movies to learn idioms. And number four, get lessons that use idioms and real English. If you want to speak and understand English, not just read it, you must learn idioms. Without idioms, you will never understand normal speech. Without idioms, you will never understand native speakers. But when you learn idioms, speech suddenly is easy. You understand native speakers. They understand you. It's a great feeling. Idioms are the key to real English conversation. Kick ass with English. I want you to kick ass with English. Kick ass is a very common slang phrase and one of my favorites. It has two meanings depending on the situation. In this situation, it means to succeed or to do a fantastic job. For example, if you do very well on a test, you can say, I kicked ass on that test. So, to kick ass with English 
means you do very well with English. You have a big success with English. Kick ass can also mean to beat or defeat someone. For this meaning, we usually add an object. For example, if Arsenal beats Manchester United, we can say, Arsenal kicked Man U's ass. If I play a video game with my friend and I win, I might laugh and say, I just kicked your ass. This means that I just defeated him. So this year, I want you to kick ass with English. Learn Business English Effortless Style. Business English lessons with a strong focus for small business and entrepreneurs. That's how I describe my new success business lesson pack. As always, I did not want to create normal, boring lessons. Unfortunately, most business English lessons are incredibly boring, even worse than regular English lessons. Most business English lessons are filled with horribly fake and boring dialogues. Most contain no valuable information other than long lists of business vocabulary. As you know, I never teach in a boring or conventional way. I decided to make my success business English lessons totally different and unique. Business English lessons that teach business. First, I decided that the content of the lessons must be interesting and useful. Anybody can make a list of vocabulary. In my business lessons, you do learn business English, but you also learn something much more. You learn the business secrets that I have used to build my own company, Effortless English LLC. I started my company two years ago with $200. I don't say this to brag, but rather to convince you that the business principles you learn in my Success Business English lessons are powerful. In these lessons, I teach the principles, the secrets, the strategies, and the specific practices I have used to build my company. I teach you how to create inexpensive products or services that excite people, how to be noticed in a crowded marketplace, how to advertise and market successfully, how to create a powerful brand. How to create and keep customers who absolutely love your company. I also teach you important tips for managing your personal finances.